So welcome back to the Cozy Rosie Crochet channel. I am super excited to be opening up the world of fillet crochet with you today. We're going to be learning how to read a fillet crochet chart and using my hearts to hold clutch bag as a brilliant example. In case you're new to Cozy Rosie Crochet, my name is Fiona and I am the hands and designer behind Cozy Rosie UK. I create patterns that are suitable for beginners to improve their crochet skills and of course have fun whilst we learn this beautiful craft. So today I'm going to be answering some of the most commonly asked questions when it comes to fillet crochet, along with how to read a chart in itself, what an open and closed box mean, how you calculate your foundation chain and many more besides. This technique is incredibly simple once you understand the basics of what the actual chart means. And I am going to take you through in some depth over what that means specifically, how you read the chart once you understand it, as well as knowing how to calculate your foundation chart if you don't have the written pattern to hand as well. So first and foremost, we need to understand what fillet crochet is. It's really similar to the offset mesh stitch, but with fillet crochet, you're working into both the chain spaces and the stitches themselves to create these little pictures in this stitch. So fillet crochet is worked using two different types of blocks. You have an open block, which is where you create the space with these chains, and then you have the closed blocks that create the solid sections of the pattern. Each block is represented by four stitches but really it's only three. We're gonna go into more detail of what the open and closed boxes mean a little bit later because there's, it's not conflicting, it's just my brain doesn't really compute the rules in a normal way. So I'm gonna show you what the actual rules are and then what the actual stitches are. If you've ever tried to understand fillet crochet before, you'll have heard people talking that each block is made up of four stitches. And then when you look at the key, there's only three stitches in it. And I want to clarify what that means and how it's calculated so that you have a really deep understanding of what each block represents. Now, fillet crochet is usually shown in a chart format, similar to something like this. This is the fillet chart for the hearts to hold bag and as you can work, see it's worked in three sections but it is a full run of rows that you need to work. Now each block is either open or closed so the open blocks are made up of one double crochet and two chains you then skip the, the stitches underneath those chains to make the open block whereas the closed block is made up of three double crochets. So fillet crochet is usually shown in the form of a written chart so you can see in this example, which is the hearts to hold clutch bag, that in the left hand corner, there is a key. Now that key depicts exactly which block is which and what that block represents. So in this instance, the white blocks are the closed blocks. So you can see that it's asking us to double crochet in the next three stitches. Whereas the open blocks, which are represented by those black squares, they are made up of one double crochet. You then chain two and skip the two stitches underneath. As you can see, the repeat of those open and closed stitches is what depicts those images of the hearts in this case. So the hearts to hold clutch bag pattern is a great way to put these crochet skills into practice because it's just one long rectangle using these open and closed boxes to depict these hearts. I've linked in the top right corner and also in the description box where you can find the written pattern and the chart so that you can follow along to create your very own hearts to hold clutch bag um, and it is a lined bag so there's lots more information of showing you how to line your bag in there as well. Just like when you're reading any crochet pattern it is really important to double check the pattern notes or in this case the key as to show exactly what those blocks represent because each crochet pattern is different. Obviously I've used the most standard practice when it comes to creating this bag pattern so you have got that open block meaning those um, that double crochet and the chain two and then you've got the closed box representing those three stitches. You can also find examples of fillet charts where they will use a dot inside the square, which would represent the open block and vice versa. So it is always important to double check that key because that designer's pattern that you're following might use a different formula or a different way to display the open and closed boxes. It's always worth just double checking. If you're anything like me and you've, you've tried to figure out fillet crochet on your own and got a little bit lost because there's no written pattern to help you understand, I want to rest assured there is a written pattern to support the hearts to hold clutch bag and you can find that with the chart as well. I know that once you've watched this full video, you are going to be able to crochet with confidence when it comes to following a crochet fillet chart. 
but we're going to deep dive into how these blocks are actually written, what they mean in the form of a full written chart. If you're not used to reading written charts, this is going to help you understand those as well. But I just want to make sure you understand what the blocks actually represent and how you read them in terms of a crochet pattern. So as we know, the blocks are made up in blocks of four stitches. In this written chart version here, you can see the different stitches all lined up with your open blocks shown with those chain two spaces. Here you can see which bits are the closed blocks and which bits are the open blocks. So the open block has those chain two in the middle and you have a start and the end. Now each of the blocks are made up of four stitches, but some of those stitches are shared. It can be quite confusing to think about these shared stitches. So for a lot of the time for myself, I kind of block those out a little bit and just focus on the key that says that you've got three double crochets in the closed stitch. You've got that double crochet and that chain two in the open stitch. And that's what's shown here. So in that first block of three double crochets, reading from right to left, you have your closed block. Next to it, you have an open block, which is made up of your double crochet and your chain two. And then you've got another closed block of three double crochets. When you've got those open and closed blocks using those four stitches, you can see that one of those stitches is shared between the blocks. And that's why you may hear people talking about the blocks contain four stitches. But when you look at the key, there's only three stitches used. If like me, you find that a little bit confusing in your head, just disregard it and follow the key. But there is one really important detail that's not shown on the chart. You can see in this fourth picture here. This picture shows that there is one stitch that is not assigned to the block at all. And actually that counts as the final stitch in that last block of the row, be it an open or a closed block, it needs to be finished off with a last stitch. That of course is that fourth stitch in that last block. So you can see here that you've got your closed block, open block, closed block, open block. That last closed block needs one more stitch to close the black block of four. So on every row, you're going to be working into a turning chain. Your first chain three counts as a stitch, which on the return of that row, you work into the turning chain to close that final block. I really hope that hasn't left you too confused, but the important thing to remember is the blocks are made up almost like a square. You have a starting, two middle stitches and an end stitch, but those end and start stitches are shared across the blocks. So it's just really important to remember what's included in that key and work those stitches within the key to create your blocks. As I said, I disregard the idea of working in square blocks. I just follow the key and make sure I work that last stitch in my turning chain to keep the stitch count correct throughout. Now that we understand what's inside the blocks, that's gonna help us calculate this foundation chain. There may be occasions where you find a stitch chart that you wanna follow, but there's no written instructions, no starting chain, no nothing. Of course, I include all that information in my own charts, but we can't always guarantee that every designer does all the things. And actually, it's quite acceptable to not include that information because it can be assumed that we all understand this information, even when actually as beginners, it's not quite so simple. So say, for instance, you have found a crochet fillet chart that you want to follow. All you've got is the number of blocks along the bottom of your chart. In the example here of the hearts to hold bag, we have a block count of 20. For calculating the foundation chain, we're going to be calculating the foundation using the multiple of three focusing on the three stitches per block. So that means we times the number of 20 by the number of stitches, which is three, giving us a stitch count of 60. We also need to ensure we add on that extra stitch that isn't shown on the chart, that last, that pesky, whatever you want to call it, that last stitch that closes the final block. So we add an extra one on for that. So, so far we're up to a stitch count of 61. And then of course we need to add in our first stitch. So the turning chain essentially of starting off that row and for that we're going to add on an extra two chains so our total start chain for this pattern is going to be 63. We've got 60 for those 20 blocks, one for the extra stitch 
right at the end. And then of course, we've got those extra two to work as our first stitch. Now, if of course your foundation chain is provided within the pattern, follow along with that. But for any of those times that you find that there's no foundation chain provided, you can of course use this calculation method by adding the extra one, those three times the number of blocks and adding the extra two to create your foundation chain and just work into that fourth chain from hook. And by the end, you'll have the correct stitch count. At this point, it is really important for me to mention the direction that you read your charts from. Now, in this chart, it has been depicted that we are right-handed crocheters and we are reading from right to left. Now, if you are left-handed and you're reading an asymmetrical chart or something that's really important, like letters that you're fillet crocheting, it's really important that you read your chart in the other direction. So that means that as left-handers, you're going to be reading from left to right. That means that the right side of your project is going to show you the letters in the right direction, as opposed to us right-handers that will have them facing in the right direction for us. This actually works for any kind of crochet chart. If you're reading mosaic, if you're reading a fillet chart or a bobble chart, anything like that. If you're left-handed, you should be reading it left to right. If you're right-handed, you will read it from right to left. It just ensures that your stitches are facing the right way or so the right side shows what you want it to show when you're crocheting a letter or a particular image that is one dimensional. Um, no, what do I mean? So that the image doesn't look reversed. Now, if for any reason you're looking at that crochet chart and thinking, oh my goodness, what is that? Don't worry. You can work out a written version of the chart like myself, many designers do provide them for you. For me personally, I I can work from a chart, but I find it more complicated in my brain than not working from a chart and just reading a written pattern. So in this example that you can see here on the screen, you've got a couple of rows or a snippet of some of the heart to hold clutch bag. So this is rows three and four, and you can see the way that it's depicted. I've got the X12, which means that we're going to work 12 closed blocks and then we're going to work to open blocks etc etc so what does that actually mean well you just need to have your three times table on hand so three times 12 is of course 36 not that i checked that on my calculator a moment ago and that means that i'm going to work 36 double crochets and then i'm going to work two open blocks which is one double crochet chain two for some reason, that works better in my head than looking at a chart and seeing a huge amount of open blocks and having to mark them off after each block and that kind of thing. Whichever way you find easiest to read a chart, be it looking at the chart and marking off those individual squares as you make them, or you're able to read the chart and know exactly what that means, all power to you. My brain doesn't work that way. So I will always include a written pattern wherever possible for any of my crochet charts. For me, it's important to help whichever way our brains work. And I think it's important to remember that crochet is supposed to be fun. Everything we're learning is going to be a challenge. But if we don't give something a go, we're never going to know how we do it. So, of course, give reading the chart a try. But if you are finding it a bit of a challenge, give my little cheat way a go and follow the written pattern. Times those numbers by three and that will give you the correct stitch count. You will, of course, need to count a little bit more than someone following a chart because they have this magical way of not needing to count. It doesn't work in my head, but everybody is different. So I'd like you to try it in both different ways and find the way that works for you. I've already mentioned you can, of course, find the written pattern and the section. The chart is broken up into sections over on the website. It's linked here for you in the top right hand corner. It's linked in the description box if you're carrying on watching. But whichever way you're finding works for you, keep going with it because it is a fantastic pattern. If I do say so myself, it's a great introduction into fillet crochet to the, you know, giving it a long working, if that makes sense. So it's a big enough project that you're going to find what works for you and you're going to be able to have a beautiful finished clutch bag at the end of it as well. For a very, very quick recap, the important things, the really important things to remember when it comes to fillet crochet is double checking what the designer has said the key means. What does that open block mean? How many chains? How many stitches? How many stitches are worked within that closed box? Because every pattern could be different and it's always worth double checking. Remember how to calculate that foundation chain if it's not already provided by the designer. You just multiply the total number of blocks by three 
add on your extra stitch, so one extra chain, and then add in an extra two so that you've got the turning chain for your first stitch and then get crocheting. Remember, if you're left-handed and you're working a picture chart, it's always worth working from right, no, <clears throat> it's always worth working from left to right. And for those right-handers, we're going from right to left as normal. Of course, give this a go. Go and have a go at making your very own hearts to hold clutch bag. That pattern is there for you on the website to, to make your own clutch bag even if you just work up the fillet crochet section of the pattern. And of course, I'd love to see your progress with learning this technique. Come on over into the Facebook group, which is linked below our little community group there. Or you can, of course, message me here, comment below, give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you've hit the subscribe button and of course, the notification bell so that you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns, my tutorials, just my little fun chats too. And I will see you in the next video.